I want to propose something to you all today. Uh, I want to propose that you resolve something very powerful to love who you are right now. And of course, I think that wanting to be your best self and setting goals and intentions is really major. Take a moment to look at what is really running through your mind about yourself that may be holding you back. The energy of the universe responds to positivity. And so if you're telling yourself you're not slim enough, you're not good enough, when that negative chatter starts in your head, stops, lean away from it. When you let those thoughts of not being enough seep in, you can't really act out the best of yourself. So your actions must be in alignment with all the goodness and strengths that you know to be true about yourself. Life is like a wave and you ride it through the ups and downs, the steady times, and then you anchor yourself in the storms. A mistake is a life experience designed to move you in a different direction. And a mistake might be more important to your supreme destiny than even a triumph. Know that your life is way bigger than any one experience. So when those mistakes happen, you use them to guide you to the next right move. What mistake or mistakes have you made in your life that you need to, number one, forgive yourself for? And what mistakes turned out to be blessings in disguise? It's all about progress, not about perfection, because nobody's perfect. It's about progress. I believe that when you're fully present, that's when you're actually fully alive. You're clearer, you're more calm, you're not distracted and able to experience all the nuance and wonder of a life more awakened. So when we can just tune into what's just in front of us, life becomes simpler and less crowded with the to do's, the what ifs and the why nots. And when you need to focus on what to do or what to do next, the focus is just that. So deeper human connection comes from that way of operating in the world. And the now becomes your everything. Now, this is what I know, that it's one of the most impactful spiritual practices, knowing the power of now. Because the only moment we all have, you have, I have, is now. Past, already gone, the future, not even your next breath, guaranteed. Letting go of energy that's clouding your vision and holding you back. It's a life practice that I learned long ago that has freed me, whew, so many ways. It's a fact that holding grudges against somebody who's done you wrong or replaying, revisiting hurtful situations in your head over and over only weighs you down and prevents you from being who you're meant to be right now because you're still energetically holding on to the past. The energy that you put into constantly rewinding to the resentment, why did they do that? Why did they say that to me? I didn't deserve to be treated that way. All of that only keeps you stuck. It will never change what happened. You gotta press stop and reject the urge to keep replaying so that you can then fast forward into the now for yourself. You know, a lot of people think that holding on to things that disempowered them is going to somehow magically turn it around. Mm -mm. You have to release the notion, give up the hope that the past could have been any different. And you also must release the idea that people would do what you might do in any given instance. This is a big one. I had to learn and relearn before I actually got it. Expecting people to do what you would do in a situation only leads to your disappointment. Not theirs, they're going on with their life. So let people be who they are and either you accept it or you don't. Not doing that keeps you stuck in a circumstance that actually costs you time, cost you energy. And I can guarantee that oftentimes the person on the other side of the bitterness you're holding on to, they're not even thinking about you. In fact, they probably have just moved on. They certainly aren't obsessing the way you are. Think of it like letting go of any bad habit that just doesn't serve your well-being. Not an easy task. Taking the road to a more enlightened, healthy existence never is. So this is what I want to ask you to ask yourself. Why? am I holding on to this? How is this serving me? And really think about the answer. Maybe it makes you feel validated. Maybe it makes you feel righteous 
or maybe taking on the pain is your way of recognizing the injustice so that even though it won't be made right, it can at least not be forgotten. It's very difficult for me to even see myself as successful because I still see myself as in the process of becoming successful. To me, successful is getting to the point where you are absolutely comfortable with yourself and it does not matter how many things you have acquired. Uh, the ability to learn to say no and not to feel guilty about it, to me, is about the greatest success I have achieved. It's the same thing that prevents you from being abused as a child, that prevents you from being abused as an adult, that allows you to build success for yourself. I will not be treated this way. I demand only the best for myself. You are worthy to say no. You are worth that it's okay if you say no. It's okay if you say no and then people don't like you. That's really okay. The important thing is how you feel about what you're doing, how you feel about yourself. It's a long struggle though. It's a long struggle. And I'm just hoping that, you know, in the work that I do on the show and the speaking that I do around the country and that young people who are watching this can get the lesson sooner than I did. Because it's painful, because you keep repeating it over and over and over until you get it right. And what I found is that every time you have to repeat the lesson, it gets worse because it's, you know, it's, I, I call it God trying to get your attention, the universe trying to get your attention. So we didn't get your attention the first time, so we're going to have to hit you a little harder this time. So I'm still doing it. I'm still learning. Turn your wounds into wisdom. You will be wounded many times in your life. You'll make mistakes. Some people will call them failures. But I have learned that failure is really God's way of saying, excuse me, you're moving in the wrong direction. What is the truest, highest vision that you hold for yourself? No matter where you are in your life, there's always the next level. There's always the next level to the last breath. So I feel that I always knew that I would get, be done with the show when I felt like, oh, I've said as much as I could say here on this Thanks. platform. So I feel that until you have used your value as a human being, you're not done. I teach them that there is no life without cultivating a spiritual life because you are first and foremost a spiritual being having a human experience. And if you lose sight of that, it's easy to get lost in the world and no one can save a world that they're lost in when they've lost sight of their own North Star. So having a spiritual life actually means actively and ritually creating the space in your life all the time for gratitude, for kindness, for empathy, for inspiration, for joy, and for reverence for life in the home of your soul first. And then working to spread that inner joy outward. It means slowing down, it means taking in the moment, it means being exactly where you are, not distracted somewhere else. It means knowing who you are and getting about the business of fulfilling why you really came to our planet. It is your job to make yourself whole. Not perfect, but whole and full. Your real work in life, your real work, is to fill yourself till your cup runneth over so that you're never grasping and needy, clamoring and insecure. When you're saying, I know who I am, and I'm telling you, it's the thread that runs through everything. It's the thing that allows you to stand in your own truth. And one of the things for years that Maya Angelou used to say to me, is baby, you need to know that you alone are enough. You alone are enough. What I know for sure is that in this world, time is a moving on and it's our most valuable commodity. You can never get it back. So staying in that loop, playing it over and over in your head of hurt only amplifies your pain. Let it go. Exhale, make room in your heart for something that is uplifting. Surround yourself with people who want the best for you. You have the ability to shift the DNA of your spirit and control how you perceive life. So why not lighten your load and let it go? Living integrity means living in a way that honors your truest self. It's doing the thing that you know you're supposed to do. 
My friend Martha Beck says that deep down, we all know what makes us happy and how to create your best possible life. And that knowledge is actually coded into your very nature. But I. So now how challenging it can be to listen and trust your own inner voice, especially when you feel the pressures of what everybody else thinks you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to get married. You're supposed to stay married. You're supposed to have a baby. You're supposed to have a picture perfect home. But here's something that I'm hoping you all will realize for yourself. Sometimes it takes doing the things that people or society say you're not supposed to be doing to find out what is true for you. What is, what are you really supposed to be doing? For example, at the very beginning of my career, some of you have heard this story, I worked as a news anchor and reporter in Baltimore, taught me a lot about life. And during that time, I, I knew I wasn't being my authentic self. I didn't like doing the news. I, I just didn't like it. But the voice of my father, who thought he knew what I was supposed to do, and even my own voice saying, wow, this is an important job. My father was saying, don't you give up that job, girl. You're making $25,000. You're never going to make that in one year. So eventually, my bosses let their feelings be known. They took me off the news and put me on this local talk show called People Are Talking. And when that decision was made at first, I thought it was a demotion. But after one day on that talk show, I felt so energized and so fueled, I knew that I had come home to myself. And that's what living integrity, even in your work, feels like. So trust me when I say that only you know what that feels like for you. And with that in mind, I want us to be more in alignment with the truth for ourselves this week, who you're meant to be, who you are right now. What have you been waiting and wanting to do? All those insights should fuel your decisions about how you move through the world right now. Pay attention to what makes you feel lit. inside. Examine any moments when your, 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 your head saying one thing and your spirit is saying another. 